How's it going everyone? It's Abdallah here, bringing you guys another tips and tricks tutorial for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This tutorial will teach you guys a couple different ways on how to make the most rupees so that you guys don't have to worry about scavenging for them. So, if you guys are excited for the tips and tricks tutorial, definitely smash that like button. So, first things first is knowing what you need rupees for. If you want to head over to any shop and refill up on any kind of arrows, or buy any kind of the local wares, you're going to need some rupees for it. As you guys can see in the top corner, I've got about over 2,000. 2,000 rupees on hand, which is a pretty decent amount, but I'm gonna show you guys that you can get an unlimited amount of rupees, very simple. So, uh, the very first thing that you want to know about earning rupees is accessible early game. Once you come to any shop, it doesn't matter where you are in the entire map, you can be anywhere. Typically nearby any of these stables, or any of the villages, there's always going to be someone that can actually sell you something and offer to buy your items with them. Typically, uh, whenever you're in a stable, you'll come across Beetle, which is a main character in some other uh, versions of the game. Uh, Skyward Sword comes to mind. But anyway, you'll find Beetle. He's got a big backpack on. Reminds me of the Happy Mask Salesman with the size of his backpack. And uh, with that, you can actually sell some items from him. So if you go to any shop owner, you can head on over and click on sell, and you should be able to sell any one of your items here. If you guys are scavengers like me, you'll come across apples in a tree and you'll naturally pick them. Hydromelons in the desert, naturally pick them. Hylian shrooms all over the place, naturally pick them. Of course, you're not gonna be using every single one of them, uh, unless, you know, you're cooking all the time. But with that, each one of these has a different rupee value. As you guys can see right here, boom, three rupees, four rupees. These sell for six rupees because they're a little bit more rare. Just keep on going through all of your inventory. And for example, like if you have, I don't know, 56 Hyrule herbs, you click on that, you click on sell all of them, and you can get 168 rupees for them. So that's pretty decent, especially at the beginning of the game where you don't have access to the entire map. Uh, other things that you want to be um, aware of are different items like Star Fragment. I would never recommend selling them unless you absolutely have to and that's like the last item in your inventory because these are very, very good and valuable for uh, fusing your uh, or upgrading all of your armor items. Uh, other than that, things that are noticeable uh, in case you find an energetic uh, Rhino Beetle, you can sell that. But all of the ore in the game are really good, minus Flint, of course. But uh, if you just farm a lot of Stone Talus, you can absolutely get Amber, uh, Opal, which sells for 60, Luminous Stone for 70, Topaz for 180. Uh, you can sell Ruby for 210, Sapphire for 260, and if you find the Rare Diamond, you can absolutely sell them for 500 apiece. So if I click on selling all eight of my uh, diamonds here, I can get 4,000 rupees, which is pretty great. But I wouldn't sell them because you could use them for armor upgrades. Of course, uh, those are the, uh, the minerals inside the game. You guys are gonna go through and fight a whole bunch of different enemies within the game, right? Bokoblins, Lizalfos. You're gonna collect a lot of their pieces. Now, Lizalfos Horn, I have a hundred of these things. And that's actually really good. So if you sell them, they're 10 bucks a pop, boom, you're done. Uh, you've got key swings, choo-choo jelly, all these things that you get from beating up enemies, they're worth a lot, especially if you want to sell them for money. Now, the downside about selling them for money is you never know when you're going to need them for Kilton's shop. Now, Kilton's shop over here, if you ever see this weird looking balloon, head over to it and he'll absolutely uh, buy all of your monster parts for his own currency and you could use his own currency to buy some pretty cool things uh, including the dun 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 dark link tunic which is kind of cool uh, so yeah you can get this entire tunic simply by selling all of your uh, monster parts to Kilton for his currency which is mon and then buy those so that's pretty much what you want to ask for is uh, ask yourself, you know, what do you want? Are you done buying all the Kilton's gears? And then if you are, then absolutely sell all of your parts uh, because you don't really need them unless you're looking to cook some elixirs with them. Uh, last but not least are the ancient items. These guys are, these pieces are really good to sell because if you're like me and you go guardian hunting for ancient cores or anything to upgrade your ancient armor, you're gonna come across a lot of these gears and a lot of these springs and a lot of the screws and they're worth a lot of money. So 
Simply put, sell 20 of these guys, you're good for a couple hundred rupees. Uh, I would not suggest selling your ancient cores or your giant ancient cores, although they're very pricey, unless you've ac absolutely uh, like maxed out everything that you need to and bought all of the ancient materials off of the um, that uh, laboratory. But anyway, that's our first method of gaining rupees in the game. It's just collecting your stuff and then selling it, all right? So now that we've done that, let's change out of this because this uh, looks a little bit creepy. We'll wear our ancient gear. No, you don't forget that here. We'll just wear our uh, tunic of the wild. This is the end game clothing. All right, so an, our second way that we're gonna show you guys how to earn some money, see, look at this, gathering, done, palm fruit, uh, is going over in Lurlin Village, which is where we're at right now. In case you guys have seen, this is the Shrine of Resurrection right over this way. Of course, you're gonna have to make your way all the way east through Lake Hylia, all the way over here to this area um, in East Nakluda which is the Hatino Tower or the Farron Tower. What is this? Yeah, Farron Tower region. So get the Farron Tower. You can see the Lurlin Village right here next to the Ya Rin Shrine. Warp over that way and you'll come across this little shop. Now, this is pretty easy because if you have the time for it, you can do a little bit of gambling. So how this works is you pay the guy 100 rupees or any other amount below 100 rupees. You want to aim for 100. You pay this guy 100 rupees and he'll say, okay, well, you put up 100 rupees, there may be a gold rupee worth 300 in one of these chests behind you. Now, it's the fastest way of earning, but the fact that you're not always guaranteed to get the 300 every time and you might get the one rupee, thus losing 99 rupees, is part of the downside of it. So, before you even start, make sure that you guys save the game. As you guys can see here, saving takes no time at all. Talk to the guy, and uh, you say you're going to be in, all right? He says, attaboy, all right. So you can go 10 rupees, but you're not really going to get much. Uh, so you really want to go for the 100 rupees. Now, it's 33.33% per chan chance that you can actually get a gold rupee out of here, and I don't think I'm going to get it. I mean, if I get it, that's a miracle. That's cool. And I lost it. Dang it. See, and that's why it's not worth it. I mean, I've seen some people say, oh yeah, this is the best way of making money in the game, but it's it's really not. It's it's another way of doing it. Now, in case you're like me, where you just dropped a hundred bucks and you got one rupee out of it, simply press start, uh, go to your adventure log, and then load the game. So load the game, and then you're just gonna start from scratch again. So now you have to go through the waiting time and everything like that. It, it's a decent way of making money if you have the patience for it. I personally don't have the patience for it. I want something that's skill-based and not luck-based. So here we go. We're going to give it one more shot just for the heck of it. Uh, just for demonstration purposes. I think I've only won this thing like maybe twice and then saved afterwards. But as you guys can see, we're going to go for the first chest again. It's never the same. And if it is the same, then you just got lucky. There's a 33% chance that it was the same one. So if you want to keep on trying for that same chest, you can. But don't think that, oh, I saved beforehand, therefore the first chest is a green rupee. So now that I know, I should go the middle or the last one. It doesn't work like that, so don't even think that way. And I've done plenty of off-screen testing to tell you that that's a fact. So anyway, we lost 100 rupees here. We're going to load up. And we're going to be done with this. We're going to leave this guy alone. Although I kind of want to try one more time. Come on, let's go. We're going to go towards the middle one. All right, the middle one is always the winner, right? Whenever you guys choose things, it's always the one in the middle. We're going to go one more time. And then we'll, we're will we going to show you guys exactly what the best way of earning money is. All right, here we go. Take take my hundred. All right, here we go. All right, we're going to go middle. Watch this be the winner. See? Oh, wow. Okay, there you go. We, we got lucky. <laughs> so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I showed you guys that it, it is possible. See, we're not doing any cuts. None of that None of that nonsense. This is all live, one run. You guys can do it along with me. So that was great. We actually saved beforehand, and we won. So we netted in, like, what, three, four minutes? We netted 200 rupees? So it could be good. I would say it, it's a decent way of making money. It's not the best, though. All right, so speaking of the best is uh, in case you have access to level two cold resistance, 
you will actually have a better time with this method. So level two cold resistance, you can use your warm doublet, which is found at the beginning of the game. Of course, you can get the, uh, you can solve the king's riddle about cooking his favorite food or beat all four shrines and then go to the king's house. Oh, sorry, sorry, old man. Whoops, spoiler alert, maybe? No, not so much. Anyway, you get a warm doublet for one warm resistance. Uh, and then of course, if you've done the uh, Revali quest, uh, or the Va Meadow Divine Beast, you'll have access to the Snow Quill um, clothing. Or if you've done the, what is that, the Gerudo quest, you can actually get a Ruby Circlet, which helps out with cold resistance too. So you can use any of those and you'll be good to go. You just need level two in order to do it. So aside from level two cold resistance, you can actually head over this way. So here's the Shrine of Resurrection, of course. Uh, in perspective, we're gonna head all the way up north this way through the bridge, through this plane, through here, in order to go to the, not the Ridgeland Tower, but the Hebra Tower. So from here all the way from here. So it's quite a trek. It's quite a trek all the way this way, and it may take some time. So if you guys are just starting the game, uh, I don't know, my path that I took was going this way, obviously doing the uh, the main quests in this general area, and then I went over to Zora's, uh, Zora's domain really quick. So going from Zora's domain all the way over this way may be a little bit of a trek for you. So this is probably like mid to late game. But if you have access to the Hebra Tower, we're going to warp over there and show you guys the best way of getting rupees within Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And it's 100% skill. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe I would say 95. 95% skill. Maybe 99? I don't know. <laughs> There's maybe like a little bit of luck involved. I don't know. But uh, we're going to do a thing called snow bowling, or as uh, the guy calls it, it's called snowling. He's got a lot of very funny uh, snow puns that he uses in his everyday talking. And uh, we're going to utilize him in order to make 280 rupees every like minute. It's pretty good if you're good at snowling. So right over here in the Hebra Tower area, if you look at the map, you can actually see uh, a place called Pondo's Lodge. If you haven't been there before, it looks like a little square house by some bushes directly next to here. So, simply put, it's very easy to find. You can probably see it right over there. Boom. So, if we go right here, you can see... You, and you can probably see Pondo. Just looking over here. Yeah, done. So, there's Pondo's Snowball, and there's Pondo's house. So, we're going to go over that way, and we're going to do a little bit of snowling. So grab your glider, fly on through. You've got your, your two levels of cold resistance so that you can withstand the very cold temperatures of the Hebra Mountains. And we're going to go to Pondo's Lodge. Now what Pondo does is he sets up a bowling ring. And what you're going to do is you're going to pay him 20 rupees and do a little bit of snowball bowling. Now the 20 rupees is for him to pretty much set up the pins for you and allow you to play. So he's got to make a little bit of money off this in case you scratch or, or uh, uh, don't get anything like that. So here we go. We got the 10 pins. And if you get all the pins, just like in real bowling and get a strike, you can get 300 rupees. If you get a spare, you can get 100 rupees. If you get, I think, seven, uh, seven pins, he'll give you 50 rupees. And anything under seven, he'll probably keep your money. So keep that in mind. So now with snow bowling, there are many different ways that you can go about this, okay? You can find your own rhythm. I've seen many different tutorials online that say, oh yeah, you gotta go over here with a snowball and you know move your camera this way and look at this little peak and then you know just throw the ball and you're going to get it if you press the R button, you know? You're gonna absolutely get it. If I get this, that's luck. Okay, that was luck. <laughs> All right. That's all 10 pins, that's a strike. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Um, I was not expecting to do that, but hey, there is a way of doing it. There's so many different ways of getting a strike. But as you guys can see right here, 300 rupees, which is great because we only paid 20 rupees in, so we got a, a net profit of 280 in what? Five seconds of doing that? So we're gonna do it again, and what's great about this is that you can keep on doing this all day, all night, however you want. Now, there's also another way, uh, is lining yourself up with a snowball. Okay, oh, oh, where are you going? How did that move? All right. Lining yourself up with a snowball, just putting it down. Don't allowing it to move. Don't allow it to move. Grab your uh, one-handed weapon. Uh, I'll use the Master Sword for luck, right? Use the Master Sword. I've seen uh, that you can use stasis on this thing and give it, like, a couple swipes to make it orange, right? 
Yeah, right. No way. You gotta be, like, perfectly lined up. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that's actually funny. That is really funny. That's, that's very, I've, I've never done that. Two pins. All right, well, let's try it again, right? Okay. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll save the best, most guaranteed way for last. We'll, we'll save it right for the last. All right, here we go. So I want to try this again. That was actually kind of fun. Like, no joke. That was, I, I had fun with that. Oh, gosh. Master Sword ran out of energy. Yeah, no way. Oh, gosh. And it's gone. Look at this. Look at this. Boom! That big three pin! Anyway, that's lame. So I just lost my money there. But that just comes to show that, you know, there are so many different ways of doing it. You can, you can find uh, that you like throwing it. You can find that you like finding a sweet spot on stasis and then wasting your weapon durability. Feel free. Um, but I'm going to show you the best way right now. So let's go talk to him. We're going to do a little bit of snowball bowling. And I'm going to show you the best way. And this works, I would say, like nine... 95% of the time. So, here we have it. We know the basic rules of snow bowling, right? We know it. So grab the snowball. Yes, yes, we got it. That's easy. Step one. Now, we're going to lock on to Pondo with the ZL button. We're going to lock on to him, right? So now, we're going <laughs> to... This is so weird, and I don't know how it works. You're going to lock on to Pondo, and what I found out is if you line Link up so that it looks like Pondo is directly in front of you. You are perfectly lined up with his shoulders so that your arms come out of his shoulders. You see how Link's looking like that right now? That's what you want to aim for, right? And then all you have to do is take a step to the left. Just a little bit like that. And press the A button and the snowball will magically roll uphill around you and then go towards the end. Just like that. Boom! Isn't that crazy? That's the craziest thing. See, that requires little to no, little to no adjustment. I would say you just lock onto Pongo, walk around him, get like the quad arm Goro thing going on right over here, or Machamp. No, Machamp's got like six arms, doesn't he? I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> no, Machamp's got four arms. Yes, yes. So you get a gold rupee off of that, and you just keep going. So let's try again. Now, depending on how many steps you take towards the left will depend on how far that snowball will roll off track. If you walk too far to the left, like too many steps, then you most likely won't get a strike. So let's try this again. We're gonna try to line ourselves up so that we're touching him. And uh, he's, he's like, what is going on behind me right now? He's like, where did Link go with my snowball? I'm just gonna stand here like a fool. A, a billionaire fool because I'm sure over time, cumulatively, with all the people that are using pon Pondo, Pongo, Pondo for all of these rupees, he's got to be shelling out at least billions of rupees across everyone's Nintendo Switches. So here we go. I'm going to move over a little bit to the left. You can see Link's eye peeking out a little bit. I think that may be too much, but I'm going to drop it anyway, and we're going to show you. Now, of course, we can do a little bit of juking this guy out. We're going to push him a little bit. <laughs> and there we have it. Boom, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look at that. Now, we got a strike off of it. Now, sometimes there's going to be that pesky one pin that is going to just be in the way. It's going to be it's going to be annoying, which will slow down your process because then you got to try again. And then you're most likely going to just throw it down. You'll most likely miss. You'll get it for 100 rupees. You'll miss it for 50 rupees. And you'll be all set. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we showed you guys the best ways, the top three ways of making money in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So thank you guys so much for watching. This, If this tutorial helped you out, which it has with me, because there's so many things in the game that you need rupees for. If you guys want all the great fairy fountains, the last great fairy asks for 10,000 rupees. So you bet I was over here with Pondo just bowling for at least a good 30, 40 minutes to make that 10,000 rupee. And of course, if you want to buy all of the different outfits that are available, those are expensive too. Some of them cost a couple thousand rupees in order to get like the helmet or the armor piece. But thank you, Pondo, for your help and contribution to everyone's Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild uh, all throughout the entire world. So Pondo's great. He is going to be single-handedly the best way of getting the most rupees in the shortest amount of time if you have mastered the uh, hold the snowball behind him, move a couple steps to the left, and you'll be good to go. 
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to continue on with even more tips and tricks tutorials for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You guys can click right over here to watch the previous episodes that I made. And if you guys have any suggestions on what you'd like to learn about, let me know in the comments and I'll make a tutorial on it. You guys can check out the newest video on my channel there. Of course, you can watch the 100% Let's Play of the game where we are going to go and get all the hearts. As you guys can see from the gameplay, we got all the shrines. It's super fun. And of course, if you want to stay updated with the latest and greatest Nintendo Switch content, click right over here to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next episode.